I've been working closely with students on their paintings. One of the things they struggle with, especially with the beginner paintings, is getting a nice clean wash that looks both clean and rich in color. So today I want to share with you three things to watch out for when painting a wash. And I'm going to show you the comparison between what I see students usually do and what I consider a better way to do a wash. Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Understanding how to do a good wash is the basics of watercolor. It's not difficult once you get a hang of it, but I've seen students struggle with this. And honestly, I struggle with that myself when I just started painting. After working with some students and getting better at it myself, I found out there are three common mistakes students make. Number one, too much water, too little paint. You need water to get paint flowing, but too much water will dilute the paint too much and the wash will start to look washed out. No pun intended. While a very watery mixture is easier to paint with, what can often happen is you will end up adding too many transparent layers to your painting, trying to have a deeper color, and it will start to look dirty very easily. So some students paint with drier mixtures with more paint and less water. While less water will make the color look richer, it can also make your mixture too dry to paint. And that's fine if you're painting smaller, darker details, but it will be very painful if you try to use a dry mixture to paint a bigger wash. So what I usually do is to add more paint with more water to create more mixture to paint with. This way I have a consistent mixture that won't run out easily. This is especially important for the middle value in your painting because it is often the major shape of your painting and you want to have a clean, rich, consistent wash for that. Number two, use brushes that are too small. I'm working with Craftmo to create my own brush set. It is nearly completed and I'm really, really excited to share with you. More about that in a future video. During the early development stage of the brush set, I asked them to make a much bigger brush than what they currently have. Because it is much, much easier to paint a big wash with a bigger brush. Smaller brushes do have their usage, but you should use the appropriate brush sizes for the shapes you are going to paint. If you use a brush that's too small, you need to constantly reload your brush and paint with many smaller brush strokes. This will disturb the consistency of the wash and make it uneven. Also, it will be much easier to create a good amount of mixture using a bigger brush. And number three, stuck on details. Many of my videos talk about connecting shapes and simplifying your painting. This not only makes your painting easy to read, but it will also help you to achieve a nice clean wash tremendously. We tend to slow down when we get to the details. And when we slow down, we are running into the risk of letting the wash dry thus making it hard to continue the wash. Therefore, it is important to plan ahead and simplify the painting before you start making the wash. The simpler the shape, the easier for you to paint a big, consistent wash. So let's recap. A good amount of mixture, a big enough brush, and simple shapes. So now I'm going to share with you the process of two paintings of the same subject. One will be the worst case scenario where I use smaller brush, water, mixture, and try to do too many details versus how I usually paint. And you'll be able to compare the process and the result of both. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so I am going to skip the drawing part because the drawing is quite simple, just the airplane and very, very simple background. And I'm going to show you the process in tandem so you can compare both painting easily. So for this one, I approach it as usual. I start with a bigger brush. So this is the biggest brush that I have. I pre-wet the sky and I also painted some light on the airplane. So after pre-wet the sky, I mix the blue color and I start to paint the sky and the cloud wet onto wet. And as you can see, I was able to mix quite a bit of mixture for the blue sky. So when I paint with a bigger brush, so that makes it easy for me to finish rendering the sky relatively quickly. And notice the amount of the mixture that I made. Because it's a sunny blue sky, I do want the blue sky to have good amount of intensity. So again, bigger brush with more water and more paint. 
I'm keeping the sky very, very simple. This is just a really quick, easy painting. But as I approach the horizon, I try to add a little bit of darkness to the cloud so it feels like it has a little bit of volume. So the brush that I'm using is actually the prototype brush set that Craftamo is working on. It has a beautiful point, so even with brush this large, I can still paint a little bit of detail with the tip of the brush. And now I start to paint the grass. And as you can see with bigger brush, just a few brush strokes, you can get a lot of coverage already without constantly reloading your brush. Another thing is the hair on the brush also matters. Now all of my brush, including the one that I'm using right now, are a synthetic hair brush. That being said, there are still different type of synthetic hair. This one imitates the squirrel hair brush. So it is a little bit softer. It soak up the water and paint a lot better. So that's great for bigger wash, bigger coverage. Now let's switch to the other painting where I use the brush much smaller. And I still want to paint the same way. I want to pre-wet the sky, but as you can see, I constantly need to go back to my water bucket to get more water, just to give enough coverage for the areas that I need to pre-wet. And I pre-wet the airplane as well, and I make some yellow, some warm color for the color of the light on the airplane to get a little bit of the warm light on it. And now I try to mix the sky color. Now I try to mix a little bit more mixture, but with smaller brush is a lot tougher. And you can see the amount of brush strokes that I need to use just to give the same amount of the coverage. It makes the painting experience a lot more tiresome because with bigger brush, I can just finish this shape within a few strokes. This one, I need to paint a lot more. And to make the matter worse, oftentimes when you're using smaller brush like these, because it's so tough to paint a bigger area, you tend to dilute the paint just so that you can have more water to make the paint flow better, just to paint a little bit bigger. So you can see the color of the blue sky is so much more washed out. Now I admit this is a little bit more extreme, but it is a lot harder to mix more thicker mixtures for a big wash like these with a smaller brush. And now I'm painting the green from the background to the grass field. And you can see how painful it is. The mixture on my brush runs out way too quickly and I have to keep going back to it just to fill the space. And I need to constantly reload my brush. And because I'm using a much smaller brush, it is much harder to have a good pile of mixture that I can use. So while the smaller brush makes painting details like painting around the airplane a little bit easier because better control for painting large area like the grass field is a lot harder. So for this one, I actually go ahead and paint some of the dark area in the airplane. So include the windshield on the cockpit and a shadow underneath. So just continue down, try to finish the grass field, try to finish this wash. And as you can see how difficult it is for me, try to get this decent coverage. And I try to mix more mixture as well, so I won't run out paint. This is sped up, so you can see how fast my hands are moving. But even in real life, you'll see my hand constantly trying to fill up the space. It's very tiring. So back to my other painting, you can immediately tell how much more vibrant and intense the blue in the sky is. Now I start to move on to the background mountain. So I'm not using as big of a brush as the first wash, but this is still bigger than the brush I use for the other painting. So I'm mixing a middle value for the background trees and bushes. And while I do this wet on to wet, I try to keep the shape simplified by connecting them together with a little bit of the detail on the edges. And here I try to carefully paint around the airplane, preserve that highlight, and continue the wash all the way to the right. 
and I sought to continue down and give another layer on the grass field because the color dried a little bit too light. So I want to make it a middle value. So I mix a big pile of green so that I can give a big, nice coverage for the grass. And again, you can see how much easier it is to use a bigger brush. Just a couple brush stroke and you get a nice, clean, consistent coverage. And also do some wet on too wet. Make sure you make sure it's a little bit drier just to have a little bit of variety of warm and cool and slightly different value on the grass. You don't have to render individual grass to show that there's volume in this field. And here I'm starting to paint the color, the middle value on the airplane. The dark underneath I'm also mixing some blue for the cockpit, the windows on the cockpit. And this is the part where I start to use a smaller brush because of the detail that's involved. And I decided to give the background mountain a bit of wash. Here I accidentally dropped some water on the grass and that creates a little bit of cauliflower edges. but. This is just a quick painting exercise, so I don't really mind. And here I use a smaller brush and paint the background mountain, darken it. And I do want to leave a little bit of light on the background trees, so I didn't paint all the way down. I want to preserve a little bit of light. And here I paint the dark part of the tree. And even though there is a lot of details in the photo for the trees and the bushes in the background, I try to keep them simple. And I don't mind connecting those trees, some of those trees, to the background mountain, creating some lost and found edges just to make this a little bit more interesting. So the only part that I slow down a little bit more is when I need to paint around the airplane to preserve its light and preserve its shape. Continue on and finishing up the dark on the background. And I do some wet on wet on the background mountain just to give it a little bit of variety. Here I remove some masking fluid. I put that ahead of the time so that I can preserve some smaller light. Now back to the other painting. And as you can see, the watery mixture makes the matter worse. After it's dry, it goes even lighter. So it almost looks just white with some dirty color on it. So I need to do another layer for the background trees just to make the color a little bit more intense. And by the way, I didn't color correct this footage at all. It's the same camera settings as well. So here I start to paint the background mountain. Now in the other one, I do use a smaller brush, but that brush actually is a little bit bigger than this one and it has softer hair. So you can still do wet on to wet with smaller brushes. It will just be a little bit harder to establish that initial wash. And it's funny because I am so used to painting a certain way when I want to force myself to actually paint a lot of details is actually hard. So here I'm trying to paint a bunch of grass textures with a lot of little brush strokes, trying to actually paint grass as they are. And that kind of ties back to my last video about simplifying and connect shapes. Sometimes students don't feel confident enough. They feel like they need to explain everything they see. So adding a little bit more dark and detail on the airplane. Now I do have to admit this one I paint a lot rougher. This is really just an example of what happened if I use a smaller brush to paint a bigger picture. And as you can see, as I start to slow down and paint a little bit more detail, the colors start to look a little bit more intense. So I decided to go over the grass again, which is the third time. 
just trying to make this grass color a little bit more intense. But you can definitely tell that I'm still having a hard time trying to give that big coverage with a smaller brush like these. I try to mix more color. I try to work as quickly as I can. And now I'm trying to go back and paint the background, try to get some dark value in the back. And this is wet on too wet, so anything I put in is going to spread out and blend into one single shape, which is good. But now I have to go over the mountain again because again, it's not dark enough, so I need to do it again. And I try to force myself to paint more details with smaller brush strokes, but it's kind of hard to change my habit. So I just try to paint a lot more smaller brush strokes, smaller shapes, try to dab a lot. And that actually takes more time. And the shape doesn't look as interesting. And at the same time, you have a lot of light and dark detail jumping around, makes the whole painting look more dirty. And it just doesn't look that good in my opinion anyways. So move back to the other painting. Now I switch to a much smaller brush because I am working on the details. Some dark details on the airplanes. And some darker details inside of the cockpit. I'm trying to get some more color and shape variations inside. These shapes are very, very small, so it's totally fine to use a smaller brush. As long as you use the proper size for the shape you're going to paint, every brush has its usage and its place. Adding some yellows, and now I'm starting to mix a darker mixture for the cast shadow of the airplane. And again, with a smaller brush for better control, So we have the airplane sits on the grass field and is casting shadow in the midday. And here's the finished painting for this one. And now let's jump back to the other painting. Here, the same thing, I'm painting some darker details on the airplane. And again, because I'm painting the dark detail, so even with smaller brush, it works. But here I'm trying to force myself to add more detail in the background. So you can definitely starting to see some repetitive brush strokes and just overall a little bit too busy for the background. Now move on to the cast shadow. Make sure the grass is dry. So something that I found out actually interesting is that because my mixture uses more water when I'm painting a smaller brush, because I want to use more water to make the paint flow better, the painting actually dries slower because I add more water into my mixtures. So the colors are more washed out and the wash is wet longer. So it's very easy to get messed up if you don't wait for it to be completely dry. So in this case, it is dry, so I can paint the cast shadow on it. And here I'm trying to paint some of the grass. And again, this is not a good example. This is not how I usually paint. I don't think you need to paint individual grasses like that. There's just way too much detail going on. I usually just paint a big flat wash with a little bit of wet on to wet varieties. And here is the finished product for this attempt. And compared in side by side, and hopefully you like the right one better. 
And there you have it. I personally like the result of a simpler painting painted with much more consistent mixture and bigger brushes. That being said, that's just my opinion. Everyone is free to have their own preference. I do hope this video is helpful with your struggle with getting a nice clean wash. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like and subscribe. Ring the bell icon for more video like this one. We are entering summertime and I wish you have a wonderful summer ahead of you. My summer is going to be packed and I will try to put up video and keep you updated. This is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. See you next time.